So hello everyone, welcome to uh, a very special episode of Chaplin Talks. I am here with my dad, Eugene. Hi, hi. <laughs> Say hello again, you've seen him before. So we thought we'd take you on a tour of uh, Chaplin's world, which is uh, where we used to live. My grandfather used to live, uh, spent a lot of his time here. Uh, we're really lucky because actually it's uh, closed at the moment because of COVID. So they very kindly opened the doors for us. Um, so yeah, we're going to take you on a little tour, make our way down. Just to want to remind you that I was born here and left the house because it was becoming a museum. Yeah, yeah, you spent more, pretty much all your life here, huh? Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. All right, well then, then let's make our way let's down. Let's go. Come on, let's. Yeah, let's follow the. Let's, uh, so we're going to the main entrance here. We've got a lovely collection of cars here, Dad. <laughs> I know. It's all our fans. <laughs> yeah. So as we said, um, they're very nice to uh, let us give a tour. Well, we're lucky. House. They've been closed now for over a month. Yeah. Yeah. And it was very nice of them to let us come in, and even though I've been living in, in the house for such a long time. Yeah. I'll... It's, I feel still, it's a very, it's a privilege that they let <laughs> us well, come and... No, for sure. Thank you, Chaplin's World. I can show you around. show you one thing from the garden yep. very quickly. When I had my 20th birthday party. Uh, how long ago was that? 80 years ago? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I, I had a tree which I planted. A tree? Okay. A friend, a Swiss singer gave it to me. A, and uh, I planted it, and it's, ver it's a very depressing tree. Okay. I'm going to tell you why, like how big it is now. Well, this is the tree here? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. I always thought it was this one. No, no, it's this one. Oh, wow. That's and, amazing. Uh, I have a picture of it. It's yeah, me small. planting it. It's amazing. So it grew that much in uh, 85 years, huh? <laughs> <laughs> in a century, yeah. That's really cool. Who was the Swiss singer that gave it to you? Patrick Juvet. Ah. And uh, it just shows time passes. The, the tree was about this size. How funny. Uh, but I think it's funny to when it happens to you. So I think it's a great birthday present to give to someone because yeah. many years later they remember. And well, you can't forget them now. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, nice. Okay, so let's go into the house. We go into the house now. This is the main entrance. Come on in. Okay. Get some hot cocoa and uh, light the fire. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the hallway. Yeah. And it was here basically we put the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree, the top would reach the first floor yeah and uh, my mother well there was eight of us so you can imagine the amount of presents know, underneath here well, and um, my my father used to stay in the living room because he would see all this opulence of presents under the tree it depressed him a bit because he thought it was too much for us <laughs> but we'd open our presents and then go and see him and say Thank you, Dad, and all that kind of uh, stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. I remember when uh, when we were growing up, you'd still get the big tree and put it up, and you used to reach, sometimes even near to it, go all the way to the top, I remember. Yeah. That's right, yeah, you could touch the... All the traditions more or less stayed the same. Yes, exactly. And uh, the, the funny thing is, 
on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve in the evening, you'd hear the doorbell ringing and you'd open up and Santa Claus would arrive. And he, he would come in and he, we were all out here in front. And he would come in with a policeman. Okay. And the policeman was to, uh, he, he would cert certify by being there that that was the real Santa and not you know, some kind of jur journalist <laughs> trying to, to come into the house or anything. So we had the real Santa coming in because he was certified by the local police. That's hilarious. And uh, he would sing in here, this whole, because it's, it's very echoey. Yeah, yeah. Where it's and then he, in his pocket he had sweets and he'd throw the sweets on the floor and of course we would scavengers <laughs> try to, to pick up all the sweets and all. And then he, he would ring his bell and he would say bye bye and he would walk out again. How funny. So now that's amazing. What was that? That was just for you kids? Yep. Yeah. Amazing. It was organized. I never knew, we never knew who it was. Who it was? No. That's so funny. And uh, as well, we had the Nestle choir coming. Okay. And would come in here and sing Christmas carols thing. That's quite nice. Yeah, it was very nice. Even though for us, for kids, it was a bit boring because Christmas carols, you know, yeah. one, two of them is fine. But I still yeah. find them boring. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyhow, it, it, it was nice. That's yeah. yeah. We should explain as well quickly. Normally there is full of Christmas decorations, but because of everything going on and because it's closed, they haven't put the decorations up yet. Yeah. So you just have to imagine a little bit. But as another story is... When I had friends over, I would explain that the house was haunted. Yeah. And uh, people asked me, you know, by who? And we said, by Mrs. Minot. Mrs. Minot was the old owner of the house. And when my, f uh, for, she never really wanted to sell the house. But when she died, her husband decided to sell, uh, to sell the house. But she, she died of natural death. But, what we say is she had a heart attack on the seventh step. So you count seven steps mm. and uh, she supposedly died. And the noise of, you hear at night and the bangings, it's her complaining, saying, get out of my house. I never wanted to, <laughs> I never wanted to sell this to you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was fun, but the friends who were sleeping here had sleepless nights, petrified. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> so, but the funny thing is, uh, for a while, my, my father in the bathroom upstairs had the smell, and he complained about the smell all the time, saying that it bothered him. Mm. And uh, we had plumbers come up. My mom had the floors ripped up, thinking maybe a dead animal was stuck in the oh, really? things and all. And nothing was there, so we, uh, we came to the conclusion it must have been a ghost, because you know a ghost you can see or you can hear or yeah, you can you got your smell. senses. That's funny. You hear a lot of stories about that kind yeah. of stuff. So in case you're wondering, we've got a timeline all along the wall here. Yeah, you have a timeline along the, along the, the wall here. And uh, well, basically, we can start from 1953 mm -hmm. when he arrived in Switzerland. Then you have 58, then he, 57, he did the King of New York. He mm -hmm. wrote the King of New York. Did, six, he, did, six, he, did he write King of New York here or do you think it was something he prepared before already and then? I think he wrote it here. Okay. The Countess from Hong Kong, yeah. of course. Uh, he wrote his autobiography. Amazing. And uh, mainly, well, here shows uh, he was uh, knighted in 75. And then 1977 is the year he died. Yeah. He died here uh, at home, at here. In the, the house. house. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then, as we walk on, we're going to go to. Uh, I know, we're going to go to this room, aren't we? Let's go to this room. Oh, you want to go to the. No, wait, oh, no, no, it's no, upstairs. No. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was the world room there. And yes. <laughs> well, we're here, we're in the library. Yeah, so this, 
I mean, when I was growing up, I, I didn't really realize how much work he did in here until we started speaking about it. Well, the library, I, you know, the thing you have to understand is my father educated himself through books. So yeah. he loved reading. He had loads of books. Uh, Encyclopedia, how do you say? Encyclopedia in French. Encyclopedia. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. And in the mornings, because we had a TV there, yeah. in the mornings my mum would come down, they would have uh, breakfast here, mm -hmm. and then she would close all the doors, and then he would go to his desk, and on his desk he would do uh, whatever he was doing, which was mainly writing his autobiography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was going to say, what I found out as well, which I didn't know, was that obviously when I gr was growing up and I watched some of these films, a lot of the early films, there was already music to them. So I just kind of thought they were made with that music. Oh, I know. Like yeah. the circus and stuff. But you said that he obviously, he, he wrote them here, no? A lot of the music. For yes, some all, the, all the, it's a lot of his work, all the music of his old films were composed here. Amazing. The music of the... Uh, the, the circus, the kid, uh, payday, uh, day's pleasure, and many others. Okay. Yeah, because I just thought that, that was how it was done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, there was no sound at the time. No, no, they would have just had a, a piano player playing along or something, right? No, what I say is, it, he's the first one who understood the importance of music with with the picture. Mm -hmm. So that's why he decided to uh, to write his own stuff, his own music. Yeah. Because uh, really in the old days, you had a piano player and the piano player would play funny music at the funny music. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It didn't really make too much sense and he didn't like that. So he just, from City Lights onwards, he decided to compose his own music. Yeah. And uh, then he decided to put sound onto some of the old films he had and films like the circus which he didn't like and everything he got ease with it by writing music for it and he really loved it then Okay, so now we're in the, uh, I guess, what would have been the living room. This is the living room. Yeah. Uh, the, li the living room is the place where he received people, when Noel Coward would come, uh, whatsoever. He would receive his friends. Uh, it's all here in the living room. Uh, <laughs> okay. He would sit over there, my mother would sit here. And they loved the fire. The fire would be going every day, uh, even during the summer. Yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, you know the footage of him sitting here. He's got a. There's some great footage of him and Una sitting here with some people, and the fire is going. But then yes. they go outside, and it's sunny. Exactly. <laughs> I know. We sweated a lot. <laughs> After we have the piano. Yeah, well, as you know, my father played violin. You have his first violin here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he played the cello and the accordion, and he played piano. And he composed all his music here, uh, all, all the music for his silent films. And it was composed on the piano here, which the piano was uh, actually given by or given or he went to buy it with Clara Haskell. Clara Haskell was a Romanian piano prodigy 
and uh, my father considered her as one of the three geniuses of the 20th century, Churchill, Einstein, and Clara Haskell. Uh, I'll quickly explain the history of her uh, because I think it's quite interesting. She, she was born in Romania and her parents realized from a very early age uh, she had a great technique of playing piano. She went to Paris to perfect herself mm -hmm. and had to flee from Paris. She fled from Paris during the Second World War, two days before the Germans arrived uh, in Paris. And my father met her through friends. And um, yeah, I remember even at Christmas time, he invited uh, Clara Haskell for dinner here mm -hmm. and afterwards. Um, she would sit at the piano and she would uh, do a, a concert. I know, it's so, it's so crazy to think. And it's yeah. funny, you had a, a tape recorder, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, by the window there. And uh, there's one tape we discovered where he's with Clara Haskell and he says to Clara Haskell, go on, play now. <laughs> and you hear, you, know, you hear microphone moving and all. And then she says, but do you think you're going to hear me? <laughs> he says, yes, go on, play, play. <laughs> it was, uh, no, it, it was quite extraordinary. I know, you, you think, can you imagine like just being in your house, sitting down and you have one of the best pianists playing? The thing is, is, as well, this room means a lot because he composed all these music here. My mother, my mother would take a projector, put the projector here, get a big screen in front of the dining room there. And uh, like if we're, he was doing the music for the circus, mm -hmm. he'd, she'd thread the 16, millimeter, uh, the 16 millimeter copy through the machine yeah. and start it. And he would play. He obviously had an idea of themes he wanted to play and try out and then said oh darling can you rewind it so you had to rewind <laughs> it completely and no it was a it was a lot of work but it was all the birth of his music yeah. for those silent films was here yeah so um then after here here is the dining room yes this is where all the Christmas party happened. I know. Oops. What were the Christmas parties like? <laughs> were they fun? Or did you, uh, well, we as always kids, had were, a, we as always, kids, were you a bit bored? We always had the big dinner here. And, what would uh, it like turkey and everything? Or would it be yeah, yeah. typical? Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, loads of uh, my parents' friends and stuff. And it was nice in a way, but in a way it was quite boring as well for kids because it was grown ups talking yeah, about yeah, things yeah. you didn't always understand. And, <laughs> and, but uh, yeah, the, the thing is my, uh, my father would, would sit here and my mother would sit at the end of the table. Yeah. And uh, there was a button underneath the table and she would buzz and then the staff would bring in whatever food and serve mm -hmm. around the table. Yeah, because through this door, which you won't see, but there's a door here in the corner, through there, there, well, actually there's two rooms, wasn't there? The first room was the kitchen, and then there's the second room, I guess, where they would go and collect all the, put it. Yeah, you had the pantry, you had the kitchen, yeah. and then the pantry. And then you said uh, you, you had the tradition of having some picnics outside. You had the barbecues here, which you said, they would pass stuff through the window as well. Yes, right? exactly. My, my, my father would do barbecue, well, cook steaks the American way, you know, burnt outside and red. In the middle. In, in the middle. And they had the barbecue there, you'd see the flames going and all, you'd put them on the plate, and pass them through the window and eat here. That usually happened when the staff was off. Yeah. You know, and uh, my mother was a great cook as well, so. Yeah. We're all well fed, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So then, should we uh, walk out this way? Yeah, then we'll go upstairs. We'll go upstairs? Yep. Perfect. That's it. I used to love these hallways, rollerblading in them. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a controversial thing nowadays for a man to be rollerblading. <laughs> but I did it. After you. Thank you, thank you. Do you know what some of my earliest memories are of this place? Tell me. <laughs> it's me getting my head stuck in the banister right here. I know. <laughs> Everyone tries to pull you. <laughs> but you can't, can't yeah. get out. And you can't get it out. The trick is, is to turn the child the other way yeah. and pull out. Because the ears, are, you have big ears. You can... <laughs> yeah. And then here we have the family tree. Which you can see happens, you know, you got, obviously you had a lot of children. Um, but you look at, you know, you got like Christopher, you know, not, not very big, quite a big family there. Quite a big. Eugene, look at that. Too many children, big family there. <laughs> Kept I yourself know. busy. Tortured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You and Michael, both. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> but amazing. Okay, so then here, this is one of my favorite parts of the house. So let's we go down first. Oh yeah, we do. Ignore that, we're going here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've taken you into this room because I think it's, what is very interesting is uh, in, the, in the 30s, Chaplin was at the height of his, uh, uh, of his fame. Uh, he already went through one divorce or two divorces, and uh, he, he was, uh, well, he was on all the covers of newspapers. His yeah. fame was tremendous. He was tired and he decided to take one year off to do a world tour, which was done by boat at the time. And during that world tour, he met people like Gandhi, and he met people like Churchill and uh, Einstein, and all. And and uh, I think his brain like a, was like a sponge. He, he he sucked in everything he saw when he went to Japan and and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think he realized that society was changing very quickly, because funnily enough, when he got back to America. The two next films he did was Modern Times and The Great Dictator. Yeah, the two most political. Yeah, and yes, it's uh, socially yeah. uh, affirmative times. So, yeah, no, that's why I'm showing this. And I think it's funny because, because they used to travel by boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they had these kind of suitcases. That no, was that's true. That was his. You opened up and you had like drawers and everything, and you put all your clothes and you could hang up your suits. In it. Do you know where the, where the museum got all this? Like who, is some of this from like private collectors or is it all something that- That was, uh, that was in the attic here. So, okay, so it's just all, it's all yeah. been around. God. When you think about it and then after it, we were probably kids upstairs jumping on it, not knowing what it was. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So funny. All right. So now we get to the, my favorite part of this, the house, which they've done, I think they've done really nicely, um, is this big wall of photos. Well, yeah. Well, they're put up here really just to show the, the people that we actually lived here. It's kind of, <laughs> You're not in, case, in case they're still in doubt. My, my favorite photo of you is this one, where you look like one of the Bee Gees or something. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> when that would have been, what, in the 60s? Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. The funny thing is, that golf cart, even the golf cart, I remember. Yes, we had it till the end. Oh, yeah, that's so funny. It was, a Harley, some... it was a Harley Davidson. Was it? Yeah. Good make. <laughs> <laughs> An electric one, ahead of its time. But there's a lot of great photos here. Let's see. There's a lot of photos of my dad, the garden and all. Yeah. The one I'll, the one I'll stop is here of 
Jerry Epstein, who was my dad's producer. Yeah, uh, well, ama from Hong Kong. amazing guy as well. Very funny, yeah, funny guy. And up there, there's uh, my, his, his brother, Sydney, and uh, his wife, we called her Gypsy. Yeah. Because, because he lived all his life in a caravan. Yeah, didn't he, yeah, he didn't, he didn't, I think he told me he didn't ever wanted the responsibility of a house pretty much. Yeah, he lived in a caravan in America and he had a, a how do you call it, a butler. Mm -hmm. So he, it's Gypsy who told me, because her name, her real name was Henrietta. Yeah. She was from, uh, she was from France. And uh, she said to me, um, oh, we did about four or five times ride around America with the caravan. <laughs> and he said, we would drive down with Sydney and we'd stop in a place like in Florida we'd like. And then we'd call up the butler and he would bring down the caravan to that place. Oh, really? Yeah, and they would stay there for two or three days That's and then amazing. on to the next place. He was an amazing guy though, because a lot of people don't realize not only, uh, he, obviously he was the, uh, Charlie's manager, but he, uh, also was quite successful himself when it came to acting. He well, was in a few things here and there, but he was just as big. hilarious as my dad was. Yeah. But uh, the only difference, he decided to stay in England because he was already famous in England. Uh -huh. And my dad moved, went to America and became famous with film. He, he did films a bit later, but he, he wasn't, for a long time, he stayed with Fred Carno. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as well, he, he negotiated a lot for, for Charlie and then after he also started the first airline in like was it the domestic airline in America? Yes, exactly, it? yeah. Which is pretty yeah, incredible. He got very much involved in flying. Yeah, he's a smart guy. The next picture, I'll just stop on here, is this lady here. Her name was Miss Ford. When my father came to Switzerland, he had to look, he wanted to find for an assistant who could organize everything uh, mm -hmm. for him. And her name was Rachel Ford. And she presented herself, she was recommended by someone. And uh, she presented herself, she said, hi, my name is Rachel Ford. I know of you, I never seen your films. And uh, I don't know anything about the film industry. And my <laughs> father said, oh, I'll take you. That's uh, nice. Thing. But the thing you have to know about her, she was part of the French Legion in the ambulance, mm -hmm. the people of the French Legion. And at the liberation of France, she was the right hand of Charles de, Charles de Gaulle. Was she really? Yeah, and she, she had the Legion, Legion d'honneur. I imagine your dad loving that. And well, the thing is, she was so organized. If we have partly all the archives so well organized, it's thanks to her. And I remember when I was 20, 21 years old, I'd get a phone call and she'd say, Eugene, I want to remind you, you have to renew your passport. It's running out in five days. <laughs> you know, she remembered everyone and everything. You know? That's she so that, funny. She huh? was that type of person. Kept you all organized. Yeah. I like, uh, I like this one. You were dressed as a cowboy. I was a, I remember at school, the teacher asked me, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, a cowboy. And everyone <laughs> laughed. So I never spoke again. Yeah. But, um, yeah. The, that's so funny. Was that, what was that, for a birthday party? Or were you just walking around the house dressed as a cowboy? No, but that's a real one. A real, a real cowboy belt I received. Is it? From, from America. The, the real hat. So you're trying it on. Yeah. And look, this is a great photo of all of you, obviously. Yes, those are all the, the typical Christmas card. Every, oh, those were Christmas cards? Yeah, every, every Christmas my mom would send Christmas cards out. Okay. Filled with the family. I mean, all of these look like they're pretty much taken here. Yep. Except okay. one or two, but uh, yeah. it's not. They're, they're nice pictures. This one I've seen a lot. But yeah. that's here. That's another Christmas card. Okay. Nice. And that was a picture of his mother. Yeah. Yeah, there's some great photos of her. But that's obviously in, in America. Yes, when he settled her down in, in yeah. America for a while. 
Okay, and then we walk into this room, which is dedicated to Uno, right? Yeah, this room is dedicated to Uno. As we know, well, as you know, she was the daughter of Eugene O'Neill. Yeah. He's you a great a playwright. Playwright. You have a picture of him here. Yeah. But the nice picture is this one here with Una. With Una as a baby. Yeah, as a child. I always try and make point of, of mentioning her because I think she was quite incredible with everything that she had to deal with as well, you know? Yeah, Being well, she's... Thrown out of America and all this kind of stuff. No, sure. She, my, she was all my dad's My dad's life changed completely when he met her. Yeah. And uh, he had everything because she was beautiful. She was very intelligent. She was young. And she, <laughs> and she, yeah, when he met her, she was young and she, uh, she was very charismatic. Yeah. All the family films we have the majority of it is filmed by my mother and uh mm -hmm. over there you, you have the, ca the camera uh, yes. with the one she actually filmed with yeah well my, my mother had an incredible talent in writing she had the most beautiful handwriting yeah. ever and she she wrote very well i think some of my sisters have inherited that yeah 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 and that everyone looks the same. Well, all, everyone says it, I know, but even I think it, like a lot of the, even if you look at your kids, my siblings, like Shannon and everyone, I feel like there's, everyone looks the same, even to all your brothers and sisters. Yeah. It's quite funny. That's life. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a lot to, uh, to see in the museum. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of information. A lot to take in, huh? You can take it, you can spend the whole day here and still not see everything. No. So we're only showing you a little bit of it. Okay, so now we walk into, well, why don't you explain? <laughs> okay, this is my father's room. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing why I'm showing it is not only because no. he, he was here and died here but uh apparently well the the furniture which you have was designed by my father yeah so uh, that's the thing the um, interesting bit as well is you have a sculpture here of claire sherndon you have the picture of her behind and she was the niece of churchill uh, yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Yep. That's so really it's cool. Nice. It's nice. And uh, obviously, over here, you've got him from a young boy all through the ages, yeah, which is quite cool. Exactly. It's interesting to see. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And uh, is this how the bedroom was laid out? Did yeah. I get it right, pretty More much? More or less, yeah. It's quite a basic room for uh, such a complicated guy. He's always well, thinking a, of stuff, you know. I know a lot of people thought that uh, furniture would be very elaborate. And yeah, no, it's very basic, huh? It, it was very basic. Do you want to go on over there? Okay, we, we just walked through. Yeah, let's I go thought, I thought we said we walked through without really stopping. Yeah, it's fine. Go stand yeah. next to your girlfriend, Sophia. As uh, Sophia, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she played in a beautiful film. Uh, on Netflix, right? On Netflix now, yeah. And now she's... Uh, Very she's... touching. Yeah, and... Um, well, here is the room where we show all the people he knew. You have people like Cocteau down there. You have uh, well, Buster Keaton. Mm -hmm. You have the uh, dress loads of different people. It goes from Freddy Kni, Dali. Yeah, it's everyone pretty much. Yeah, it's everyone. Yeah. It's quite a cool room. Time. You got Brando up there as well? Yes, Brando up there. Disney? Disney. So I think for now, that's all we're going to show. So, uh, like I said, when everything calms down and we could, and the museum can open again, I think we'll come back and, uh, or at least I'll come back and show you a little bit more of everything.
If you have any questions, you have to comment below. You have to subscribe to my channel as well. I need more followers. <laughs> I'll speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's anything you want to see, comment below as well. Anything to add? No, 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 no. Look, you're all welcome. I only can encourage everyone to come here. Yeah, yeah. This and, is just a fraction. This is just a fraction of everything, and there's still the whole garden to see. There's the studio, which is really good fun. So, I lived here, and usually I should say I hate. I should say I hate coming here, but unfortunately not. I really love it. I think it's a great place. Okay. So come over and what, and, and see. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. There we go. Swing, little girl, swing high to the sky and don't ever look at the ground. If you're looking for rainbows, look up to the sky, you'll never Find rainbows if you're looking down. Life may be dreary, but never the same. Someday it's sunshine, someday it's rain. Swing, little girl, swing high to the sky and don't. Have a look to the ground If you're looking for rainbows Look up to the sky But never, no never Look down